Hi everybody, this is Cordelia from Scanner Monkey. Today I want to show you how to design a shirt for merch. So merch is a part of Amazon where you can design your own t-shirts. Here's one that I did. This is actually crazy enough, my best selling shirt. Um, I have only sold nine of them, so I'm not exactly making a fortune on merch, but um, I keep at it because I know that once I get the hang of it in terms of figuring out what sells, that it's going to um, be a great way to bring in revenue. Um, but I did want to show you how to design a shirt. So I use a program, a graphics program called Paint Pro for the Macintosh. It's only $10. Um, the principles for design are pretty much the same in whatever graphics program you use. Some of them are easier than others. Photoshop, InDesign, those I would say are more complicated. You've got Paint, which is pretty simple. And it's gotta be Paint Pro, not the Paint, the free one that comes on a Windows computer. Canva, C-A-N-D-A is another one that's online. You have to do the paid version to be able to design shirts for merch, but that's another option. So I wanted to just share a little bit of the process of um, thinking about a design and then actually just creating one. So I use this app all the time. I'm not, I, this is not affiliate link. I just really like it. This is Chris Green's, um, Chris Green's thing, merchresearch.com. It's, it's actually like a Chrome extension and a website and anyway. So what you can do though, is you can actually search uh, merch shirts. So um, if you're gonna do one, let's say you wanna do a Valentine's shirt, you would just put Valentine in there and then it pulls up all the Valentine's shirts and if you get the paid version, um, you get little, it, it actually shows you the rank. So for example, this really cute love shirt, which I, I really love it, ha ha, should be on this list. There we go. Here it is. Um, it's selling for twenty dollars. That's a really simple design, and it's got a killer rank, right? It's ranked seven hundred in clothing. It's insane. So whoever designed it is good job. Um, this is a great example of shirt. But what all I did is put Valentine into merch research, and it pulls up a list of related shirts that are merch shirts. And you can do that for any category. If you want to look at a trending hashtag, you can do that. Um, and this is actually the one that I did a shirt on. This is my shirt right here for science. Um, so far, it's got a rank of 58,000 in clothing. I think I've sold one of them, but I did want to show you uh, how I designed it. So what I did, I'm really not a graphic designer. So I found a shirt that I liked that was sort of a trending shirt. <clears throat> this one right here. Um, this is like a trending politically active shirt, right? So um, I like it because it's got all the different colors of fonts. Um, and it's also got different sizes of fonts. Um, so that all the words look like a rectangle, even though they're different sizes. So I'm kind of looking at this not from a, just a content perspective, but from a, a design perspective. And it's got a really good rank. It's ranked about 6,000 in clothing, which is really good. And you can see there's a lot of similar shirts, but I, I, I went through March research and found one that had a good rank to sort of emulate. So over here, the shirt that I designed myself, Ah, I lost it. <laughs> I'll find it in a minute. Um, okay, never mind. Let me go back. Um, okay, so if you see over here, this is my paint screen. So when you're starting, um, you want to create a new file. And all of the merch um, template files should be the same size. You want to do it by 4,500 pixels, by 5,400 pixels. 300 DPI resolution. You can do this in any graphics, any good graphics program. And you want it to be PNG file, which um, means that that gray and white check background is actually clear. Um, so all the images is just the text or, or images itself. Um, and so you do this and you create your file. I already have one here. And so what I did is I kept this one really simple 
um, I typed out my words. Now sometimes what I do, one of the things you have to be careful of when you're first starting to design is um, what color shirt you want to design on because if you design it on that clear background and then you want to do it on a dark shirt, um, you can't really see what it's going to look like. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put a black rectangle on my image if I want to do it on a dark shirt. And then that way um, it will show me what it's actually going to look like. And then before I submit the design, I'll put the black rectangle. So in this case, what I did is I just typed the words that I wanted to put in. And these are actual Twitter accounts. A couple weeks ago, or I don't know, maybe last week, there was a story about how the Twitter accounts for all these national agencies got shut down. And so they all started their own rogue alternate Twitter accounts. And so what I did do is I saw the news article about it. I thought, oh, that's interesting. I'm kind of a science person, so let me see if I can do this. Um, I did research each of those Twitter accounts because it, the article actually had like eight of them and I couldn't find a few. So I did want to make sure they were actual <laughs> Twitter accounts. And so I checked that. So I kind of did my homework first. Um, and then I just typed in the words, and then I really kind of played around with the colors, but I was using, you can see the colors are very similar to the ones on this other shirt here. Did yellow, blue, green, so I put pink in. <laughs> so, um, so I kind of used their style as a guideline for my own because I think that one looks really good. If I, ha if I do this again, I might actually, instead of doing pink, I might actually do that red because I think it looks really nice. But anyway, I, I try to stay away from green and red. Um, but the shade of green is okay with red. So anyway, there you have it. So I typed the words in, just plain text, and I really just messed around with different fonts and sizes. So you can highlight the text, and then you come up to the font picker, and you just type in a font size. And then it just resizes it. Um, all right, there we go. So you can do that and that and just resize it at will until you get the size you want it. And I did that with each of these fonts. You can see they're all tool. This is this is Chalk Duster, Courier New, Avenue Next. This is Avenue. Now, most of these fonts already came with my program, but I did download a few of them, like Chalk Duster I've downloaded, and I think the Avenue I downloaded. You can look online for free fonts. You can download, just make sure they're free uh, for commercial distribution, not just free for personal use. Um, Google Fonts is a great source of fonts as well. So that's how you do that. You just design it in here. You've saved it already. Um, yeah, I mean, size there already. I'm going to take out the black rectangle. And um, then I just do a, a file save as. Now, I save one version as a paint document, which is my Paint Pro software. So if you were doing this in Photoshop, you'd save a Photoshop version. But then you also want to save a PNG version, which is the, um, the one you're going to upload into Merch. All right, so now I've gone ahead and, and logged into my March account and gone to the Create tab, and now I can upload that design that we just made. Let's find it. Okay. Should I just do this other one? I just did this one today. It hasn't been approved yet, but you can see it. Um, so you just upload, if you have size that PNG file the way that we just talked about, then it will just pop right in here. Um, one thing I will say is you want to make sure on your images you don't use the full width of the image because otherwise um, it kind of goes out to the armpits of the shirt. And in terms of where it is on the height, you also don't usually want to use the whole height because you really don't want a shirt to go right up to the neck. Um, the only ones I've seen that, that really do that are those keep calm and carry on style shirts because they're kind of a long shirt design. Um, so just uh, make sure when you first start designing them, you'll probably want to order one of every shirt you make for say the first two or three, and then you'll get the hang of how it looks and how it works, and then you don't have to.
to order them all. And you can do a back design if you want. I haven't done that yet on any of my shirts, but especially if you're doing something for like a public event or whatever and you have sponsors, it's a great way to go. It does raise the minimum price a little bit. All right, I just had to log back in. So then you're here on the color selection screen. Um, you can choose your design if you want it in men, women, or youth. Um, now, I will say that the plus size shirts, if you're doing plus size, only come in men's. So, so FYI, if you want plus, you can only do men's. Um, they have two different um, styles. The American Apparel Slim Fit is really small, <laughs> so I would not recommend it. I use this Anvil Elastic for everything, and most of the people I know use that. So you pick your um, gender. If I want to do a plus size shirt for this one, I would do that. Um, and then you pick your colors and um, you just choose the one you want for ones. You can do up to five. I usually only do a few because you really want to keep the choices as simple as possible. Um, so you do that and then you're going to go ahead and set your price. Now, I usually set my price around $15.99. Um, I figure that gives me a pretty good royalty rate and still keeps it a good price. I, I haven't heard that like, you can lower your price, like set it at $12.99 and then move it up as your shirt gets more popular. I don't really know how effective that is in the shirt world. The minimum price you can charge, I think, is $10.99. Uh, or 1097 or something like that. That basically is a break even price. So if you're doing a corporate design and you're just trying to get the word out, that's your break even price. You won't make royalty on it, but you can sell it on Amazon, which is nice for, that's what we do for all our scanner monkey shirts, things like that, just to make them easily available. So anyway, you save this and continue. And then you're gonna go ahead and write your listing. Um, now the brand name, Usually you do not want to use a consistent brand name across all your shirts because you're going to, um, it's, it's easier for copycats unless you're really trying to build a brand and then you just have to monitor it and send emails to uh, merge support if you get copycats. So um, This shirt is part of my everyday curves, but if it was the science shirt that you see on the right, I would have called it science resist tease. I try to get as many keywords in as possible. So I might actually use the brand name as a place to put in keywording. I still try to make it sound like a brand, but um, this actually is kind of a dumb brand. It sounds like you're trying to resist science, but you could do like um, March for science. Shirts, you want to be careful you don't get into copyright infringement or trademark or whatever. So anyway, like something like that. And then, um, you know, I usually call it pretty simply what is on the shirt. And then I usually try to use the word shirt, T and T-shirt at some point in the listing. And then you go ahead and write your product features and you go ahead and write your product description. Um, And these are all chances for you to use keywords um, and still make it sound natural. And then, um, <laughs> okay, and now you get to the final screen. All right, it's not letting me. I'm trying to just put in some sample text here. Okay, here we go. And then you get to the final screen and you ch choose your main color that you want showing on the listing. And then the secondary color will be automatic. And then the, the cool thing is you can save it as a draft. You can do a sample. So if you wanted to do a lower price version for, you know, just for you to order, or if you're doing one that's a private shirt that you don't want public, you can do that. And then, or you can sell it public on Amazon. This one, I already uploaded this one, so I'm just going to do this one as a sample. And then you just hit submit, and that's it. So that is how you design a shirt on Merch. You design it in a graphics program, and then you upload it into Merch. It's pretty simple. Now, you will get, you could spend a long time working on design. You could spend a long time 
on doing really good design, then I think that's a great idea. Um, but the first thing you should do is just kind of get the hang of the process. All right, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, oh, I was going to show you guys just some of the other shirts I did using the same program. Um, not that other one, that one I didn't do, but this, this is my circus. These are my monkeys. This one I did, I just downloaded this font, the circus font. And this is actually, like I said, been my best selling shirt. This is one I did for Valentine's Day. I just did this like last week. Um, oh, I wanted to show you guys this website. Um, it's called Pixabay. And you can get free royalty free images you can use on your shirts. Um, I pulled up some beakers because I was going to put a beaker image in the science shirt, but I, I didn't do that. But anyway, you can um, look for any images. And then when you do, you want to, um, let's say you're looking for Valentine's image. Um, in general, you don't really want to use photographs on a shirt because they don't print as well. If you are going to use a photograph, make sure you test it and really know what you're doing. But you can select under images here, illustrations, and then you will get to just the illustrations and then you can click on them. And ideally you want to try to find some, see that one has a white background. Whereas this one, wow. this one has a clear background. So you already can just use this or you can like, if you wanted to just take out a heart, you could just take out a heart. So that's Pixabay. And then um, we've got this shirt. So this image, this um, bulldozer I got off Pixabay and then I just, you can actually recognize those hearts from that other image we just looked at. I pulled the hearts off that image and put them on the truck. So that's how I did this one. And then I did this little rocket ship one. Again, I pulled all these images off of Pixabay separately. So I did the rocket ship was one image. The panda bear was a different image, which I just doubled up on so they wouldn't get lonely in the rocket ship. And then I just drew those hearts in the, in the graphics program. Um, and then I've got this shirt. Oh, here's the science shirt. So this is what the final version of it looked like. Um, with the colors and everything. And I just did dark shirts because I thought that they, it just was gonna look better. Um, so that's that shirt. And I want to show you guys. Oh, and then this one I just did for fun for like schools that have STEAM programs. Um, I pulled this heart image off of Pixabay and then I just did I Love STEAM. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't sold this one, but I did an I Love STEM and an I Love STEAM shirt. Um, I, I've, I've been trying to practice at them. So that's just a few different shirts I've done, how to do it. And I do usually try to put the sizes in the listing. So that's kind of an overview of how to design a shirt on merch. You can get way more into it than that, but that's a really basic overview. Please let me know if you have any questions. This is Cordelia from Seattle.